Sector 7-1, Stress in Earth's Crust. Unit 7 is all about earthquakes, and earthquakes are caused by stress acting on the Earth's crust. Now, we've talked about plate tectonics, which helps explain why most of the stress that's happening happens. There are some cases where we don't look at plate boundaries where earthquakes can occur, but there's still stress that causes it. Now, stress is identified as a force, so a push or a pull that acts on a rock to change its shape or volume. So shape, volume can be changed by a force acting on it. Now, there's typically three types of stresses that we look at, compression, tension, and shearing. Compression is when the rock is squeezed. So you can see these forces from the outside push inward on the rock, and that's a compression force. You kind of see some of the folds that will take place by that happening. Tension is the opposite, where the forces are pulling out on the rock, being pulled apart. You can see then how it kind of gets thinner in the middle, whereas compression got thicker. And then shearing is just uh, mass rock is being pushed in two opposite directions. And you can think about uh, San Andreas fault line as a shearing example, where rock on one side is being pushed one way, rock on the other side being pushed the other. So we have two forces here acting in opposite directions but acting on different parts. So they're parallel to each other. So compression, tension, shearing are three types of stress act on rocks. And they occur at different types of faults. Now, a fault is a break in the rock, uh, typically where movement occurs. A normal fault, the rocks are being pulled apart, so there's our tension stress that we talked about. Rocks above the fault move down and pull apart. So if these two, this line here separating these two slabs of rock is what we call the fault. That's a break in the rock where movement occurs. Now if we have our tension forces pushing, pulling out on this, then this side is going to slide down while this side slides up. And this is a normal fault. A reverse fault is when compression is acting here, so we're getting squeezed together. And here's our two forces pushing in. And the one above the break, the fault lines here again, the one above it's going to get pushed up, the one below it's going to get pushed down. Then a strike slip is when the rocks are sliding past each other. That's our shearing fault. Again, think about the San Andreas fault line. So here's our fault line, and they're kind of sliding past each other. So normal is tension, reverse is compression, strike slip is shearing. Now, typically when we talk about faults, we'll also talk about whether it's a hanging wall or foot wall. Most faults occur at some angle. They don't occur perfectly straight up and down. And so any of the rock that's found below the fault is called the foot wall. Any of the rock found above the fault is called the hanging wall. So we can think about our two separate pieces of the crust here. What's above the fault is hanging wall. What's below is the foot. And you can almost think about it kind of forming like a foot. Think about like toes like that and then you have the heel and going up. And hanging wall is hang, kind of hanging on to the foot wall. So foot wall is block rock that forms the lower half of a fault. Hanging wall is the upper half. Now when we look back at our three different types of faults, this is below it. So this is our foot wall. This is our hanging wall. This is our foot wall. This is our hanging wall. So in the reverse fault, the hanging wall moves up. While in a normal fault, the hanging wall moves down. I mean, it's just about how they're being pulled or pushed together. Now, the rock may not move. It may just get deformed. In that case, we may see things like an anticline or a syncline. Here, in this picture off to the right, we do have an anticline and a syncline caused by a compression force squeezing this, causing the folds to form. So an anticline is when the rock bends upwards, and a syncline is when it bends downwards. And so here you can see that this layer of rock here, if I just follow one layer, kind of goes down like that, and then you see it disappear. This layer of rock kind of falls up here, and then, well, it would be up here, but it kind of got worn away through time. Uh, you may see a little bit up there. So this is compression acting here, causing the anticline syncline to fall to form. Um, typically, what will happen is the upper layers kind of get cut off through erosion and weathering, and so different layers will be exposed. So syncline pushes the top layers down, anticline brings them up, so the older layers, the older layers are typically always here on the bottom. They get brought farther up and they can actually get closer to the surface at that point.
So when we look at the picture to the right, the oldest layer is found right here. The youngest layer is right here. But the youngest layer, when it was above this, got worn away by erosion. Down here, this older layer is probably way down here now in this section. But because of the little anticline that formed, that old section got pushed up and brought closer to the surface. Now, if you go to a place like Ledges State Park, you can see anticline synclines in the rock layers. And you can see the oldest is typically at the bottom, the youngest at the top. The only time it won't look that way is if some layers get worn away by erosion and weathering, whether it was incline or anticline or syncline.